Hi, I'm Evan with the Crafty Cask. We've been doing a ton of virtual tastings and having a lot of fun with it. And I wanted to take just a little bit of time to uh, walk you through the proper te techniques of tasting wine. Um, now these aren't, you know, required, but they are very helpful in understanding a little bit more about what might be in your glass. So I'm just going to go through them here and uh, that way you'll be prepared next time someone presents you with a nice glass of wine to look sophisticated. <laughs> so the steps that are involved um, can be briefly summarized. There are five S's. Um, there's sight, swirl, sniff, sip, and swallow. Uh, when we teach these, we like to um, kind of remind people that these aren't done in a vacuum and you do them in tandem with all of the others and you kind of go back and forth between them um, and revisit the beginning as you get through to the end. So the first S there, I mentioned sight. You're going to want to inspect your wine visually. The easiest way to do that is if you have a white background um, and simply tilt the glass away from you and look down through the wine at the white background behind it. A couple things that you can discern there. Um, obviously, is this a red wine or a white wine? But more than that, uh, you can understand a little bit more about you know, what grapes might be used to make the wine as well as the age of the wine. The depth of color that you're going to find, uh, a couple of fun techniques. If, you've, uh, if you don't have a blank piece of paper, um, perhaps something that has a little writing on it, when you look through the wine, can you read or at least see that there is lines of text? Um, alternatively, hold your hand behind the wine and uh, see if you can't see, you know, any light shining between your fingers. This is a pretty deep, darkly colored wine that I've got right now, and I can't see these lines between my fingers. Um, the depth of color will give you an idea about the grapes that are used. In this case, I've got Petit Syrah, which is one of the more darkly colored wines that's out there, so no wonder I can't see between my fingers. Um, and then take the glass up to your nose and give it a sniff. Uh, get your nose right in the glass and uh, kind of take a few uh, exploratory inhalations and see if there isn't anything that jumps out and uh, screams in your face, hey, I'm, you know, chocolate-covered cherries or uh, tobacco or something, something like that. Um, a big part of smelling is kind of being prepared to smell something and kind of pausing, taking a breath, maybe clearing your mind a little bit. It's almost like a Zen thing. Um, so that when the smell comes to you, when the uh, perception of an aroma reaches your nose, you're able to kind of grasp onto it. It's a, often a fleeting sensation, so unless you're prepared, it can be there and gone, and you're like, wait, what was that? Swirl the wine around in your glass. Uh, this is done to kind of help aerate the wine and release more of those aromas. And uh, you can actually be pretty vigorous when you're doing this. Now, I've just got a couple ounces poured into my glass instead of a full glass of wine. Um, so if you've got a full glass, be a little bit more cautious. But the, the trick here is just, just hold the stem like a pencil and draw circles. Um, and as you get it moving, you can get a little bit more vigorous. But you always want to do this on a flat, hard surface. Um, oftentimes, you'll see people swirling the wine like this. And if you get your elbow involved too much, then you start twirling it like a baton. And your neighbors aren't going to appreciate that, especially if it's something dark and staining like Petit Syrah. And then stick your nose in the glass again. I mentioned we're going to kind of be going back and forth and see how much more aroma there is. You never want to fill a glass of wine all the way up to the top, uh, simply because then there's no room for the aromas to collect. Uh, and then as you're swirling, uh, again, go back to the first step there and, and take a look at it. And you'll see sometimes uh, tears or legs forming and falling on the inside of the glass. Um, those uh, can tell you very little about the wine, but they can give you a little bit of an idea about uh, the overall alcohol percentage or sugar content that might be in the wine. Um, and then stick your nose back in the glass again and kind of revisit the aromas. A couple of techniques that are fun, helpful, useful um, is play with your wine in the glass and the orientation of your nose to the wine. So try smelling with your nose quite close to the wine, you know, tilting the glass on its side so that the wine comes up to the rim. And doing kind of a low, slow, sustained inhalation, um, almost like a, a yoga breath, if you will. Uh, and then, by contrast, uh, try sniffing with short, quick bursts. And when you do that, play around with uh, the exhale, too. So, 
and actually exhaling back into the glass as you inhale back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Um, the exhale is going to be introducing moisture into the glass and humidity facilitates um, your you know, perception of odors uh, for better or for worse if you've ever been in a place like New Orleans or Florida in the summer. And uh, what you're looking for when the, when the wine is kind of introducing itself and presenting the aromas to you uh, are aromas of primarily fruit. Those are going to be coming from the actual grapes that are used itself. Uh, and then secondary aromas that are coming from the way the wine was made, fermentation processes, uh, things like that. And then tertiary aromas are those that are going to be coming from the actual barrel aging or maturation of the wine. Uh, if you've got something that's, you know, 10, 15 years old, it's going to have different aromas than it would be presenting uh, when the wine is very young. So yeah, kind of pay attention to those and see if you can't pick out just a few things. I like to try and pick out one or two things kind of from each of those categories, something fruit, something non-fruit, and that can be um, something as obviously as like as a vegetable, as a non-fruit, um, but could be things like um, pepper, lavender, chocolate. Um, and then things that are associated with the tertiary aromas would be wood notes, things that kind of smell like wood, like a cedar box perhaps, or um, tobacco. And then take a sip. When you take that sip, you see how I kind of moved it around in my mouth. It's important that you effectually chew the wine. Um, and uh, you don't, it doesn't have to be like super vigorous. You'll see sometimes people uh, in tasting rooms and at wine events uh, swishing the wine like Listerine. Um, it can be something as simple as simply, you know, pushing your tongue up into the roof of your mouth, forcing the wine up there, letting it kind of cascade down you know, all on your the inside of your cheeks pooling up underneath your tongue um, and what you're looking for there is the tactile sensations now the first sip that you take is going to oftentimes be a, a, a little bit of a overwhelming feeling and sensation um, so try to kind of ignore it as much as possible and then when you go back and revisit on the second and third sips uh, you're going to get a much truer representation of the wine And you'll notice how with this wine, um, for example, I'm getting a, a stringent sensation, a drying sensation uh, from the tannins that are not uncommonly found in high levels in uh, a wine like Petit Syrah. Uh, that's that sensation of like you just went to the dentist and there's uh, cotton balls in your mouth, that kind of grippy feel. Um, acidity will cause you to salivate and you can check you know, the relative acidity in a glass of wine after you take a sip, you just kind of let your jaw hang slack and uh, watch as you kind of pay attention to see if there's any saliva that is pooling up underneath your tongue. Uh, that means it's relatively high acidity. And then how those are going to kind of play off one another, you know, the saliva that is pooling up in your, in your mouth, uh, complemented by that drying sensation and how they, you know, kind of complement one another and it keeps your mouth from getting too dry. Um, you're looking to see also, of course, how the flavor of the wine um, translates from what you smelled. Uh, if there are things that you expected to smell or to taste based on what you smelled that are not there or vice versa. How, you know, balanced it is, you know, those components that I mentioned earlier um, with regard to tactile sensations and well, and well, the, the heat from the alcohol, um, the sweetness that might be present, uh, if the wine has you know components of spice, if those are also balanced by uh, flavors of fruit or molasses or chicory, whatever it might happen to be in there, as long as none of them are too pronounced and overwhelming, um, the wine you know has a, a good good kind of balance of the components. The best way to kind of really hone in on this idea of balance is after you swallow. So the last step there, savor. Um, is really where you're kind of paying attention to uh, the persistence and how long the wine continues to taste like it did when it was in your mouth once it no longer is. So with this one, and with any wine really, um, I like to kind of just sit there and 
think to myself and kind of count. Eight, nine, ten, eleven. And, uh, you know, kind of keep a rough estimate. Keep track for yourself. And oftentimes if you find a wine that you're still tasting 30 seconds, you know, even a minute or longer after, and it still tastes good and enjoyable, uh, that's usually a pretty high marker of quality um, to the overall balance of the wine. I'm sure you've all had the experience where you take a sip of wine and then you swallow and there's a, like a bite almost. Oftentimes that's just something that is out of balance and it's not as present or recognizable when the wine's in your mouth, but as soon as it isn't, it uh, falls out of proportion and makes itself uh, aware. So yeah, that's kind of the basic fundamentals and there's a lot more that you can delve in and kind of come to understand about a wine, uh, but paying attention to those steps uh, when you are trying a wine for the first time um, or, you know, are trying a wine that you're uh, you, you weren't really necessarily uh, anticipating, um, but sometimes, you know, someone will hand you a glass of something and you'll just take a sip, not really thinking or uh, wondering or curious at all what's in the glass, and then you're like, whoa, what's that? Um, that's a great opportunity to kind of take a few moments and go through these steps. And if you have someone to talk through them with, uh, all the better, because I think it really helps to have someone to play off of. Uh, and you say you smell one thing and they say, oh, I don't get quite that, but I get this. And you're like, oh yeah, I can see that too. And really um, helps to foster a an enjoyment of wine um, that, well, uh, is what uh, led me down this path. Um, I lived for many years as a practicing sommelier and um, the the pursuit of, of wine appreciation and wine knowledge is something that I've really enjoyed over the years and hopefully in paying a little bit more attention to these steps it'll be something that you find you really enjoy too. Uh, so thanks for watching and uh, hope to see you at our next uh, one of our next virtual tastings. Cheers.